In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the minimal viable account structure, bit of a tongue twister, for maximum conversions within your OmniSend account for Shopify stores out there. So if you haven't signed up to OmniSend yet, I'm gonna include a link down in the description below. I am partnered with them, so it'll take you straight to their website and their portal, and you'll be able to sign up for an account. Now, this tutorial is geared towards e-commerce businesses. So if that's you, please do watch till the end of this video as we've literally generated our clients hundreds of thousands of revenue through OmniSend. Let's jump into a screen share. So on the account, I just have a uh, quick demo pro account for OmniSend right here. I haven't actually integrated it with Shopify. However, I am still able to do all of the things that I'm going to be demoing in this video. So first of all, here I'm gonna be demoing how to set up a sign up form to actually convert a certain percentage of your traffic into leads for your business and then i'm going to go over campaign automations and then i'll touch on a few points in terms of campaigns so first of all you want to go to forms and then you want to hit create sign up form this is just one that i've created earlier uh, for demonstration purposes in terms of the theme side of things there's really two ways you want to be going here right you want to have uh, on desktop you want to have like the lifestyle image and the call to action whereas on mobile you'll see that the uh, lifestyle image just gets completely uh, turned off this is really really powerful because on mobile generally speaking if you have a form that is uh, pretty huge it, it means that the text is going to be slightly harder to read right which is why i actually really like the pop-up form feature on OmniSend. so yeah next you want to go to edit the content i'm not going to go over too much of the content side of things but just uh, as a general uh, rule of thumb when it comes to best practice you do want to be leading with a offer for example like a discount code or maybe you could do like buy three get one free something on all those lines uh, the discount doesn't need to be anything too crazy anything above 10% in my opinion from our experience generally is a sweet spot and then when it comes to uh, the behaviors this is what I'm really gonna go over so you want to go to settings here and make sure when it comes to timing by default it will be uh, firing immediately on site entry you want to click change and then you want to make sure you want to tick all three show form when user tries to leave your store is basically when someone goes uh, to your store and then they hover over the uh, exit button that's when they'll actually trigger the form. Uh, in terms of seconds spent on site, generally speaking, you wanna go between kind of like six to uh, 16 seconds. That's the kind of area that we find to be the best in. So let, let's say start off with somewhere like six seconds and then 50% uh, scrolling of the page. So for example, if you have a super, super long product page and you really do tr use uh, long form copy to sell, then you could probably dial this down to something like 20 to 30 percent whereas if your product page is super short you definitely want to be keeping on the 50 to kind of 60 percent higher end right generally speaking for clients we use uh, the ranges between 40 to 60 percent you know just toggle that depending on how your e-commerce store is configured so once you hit save so you want to make sure the limit for this is between kind of like 7 to 14 days you can even go as aggressive as like three to four if you really want to get cheeky with it uh, but generally speaking, you know, seven days is really great for uh, best practices. You want to make sure double opt-in is not enabled. Generally speaking, this is the, the reason this is, is because you want to minimize the amount of steps required from enrollment to actually obtaining the offer code and then checking out. Save and proceed. And you want to go to save and enable. Obviously for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to enable it because it doesn't really connect to anything personally. So it's totally fine. Now I'm gonna be showing you the automation side of things. So you wanna hit new workflow. And for as a basic best practice, the few flows that you want is the welcome flow. You want the cart abandonment flow, browse abandonment, post purchase. Uh, so basically like customer thank you and probably a cross sell upsell flow as well. Personally, you would just uh, import the default one. So I'm gonna just show you the abandoned cart one as that is basically the one I get the most questions about essentially. Uh, so over here, once you click that, it will be imported straight into your account. So you could just change the name to, uh, for me, it would be like something like plethora abandoned cart update. Uh, for trigger filters, we generally don't have any. 
Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. When it comes to audience filters and stuff like that, you don't really need anything uh, when it comes to the pre-purchase flows. Exit condition order is placed and that should be fine for the abandoned cart. If you're doing abandoned product, then you wanna have an exit condition as added to cart as well. And when it comes to the email side of things, you can split test the delay, anything between 30 minutes to kind of like four hours is a really, really good spot to be aiming for. When it comes to the content, obviously you're gonna to have to choose the sender's email and then click here to edit the content. I'm not gonna to focus too much on the content side of things as that's where you'll be getting the most creative. Once you hit update and then save and close, now you will have a flow in draft. The reason why this is in draft is because obviously I didn't make every single flow uh, enabled simply because I didn't put the sender email address. But yeah, generally speaking, this is how you create the flows in OmniSend. So the other flows that you wanna be having is the welcome flow. So uh, personally, I recommend this one uh, as opposed to this one as the welcome flow is supposed to have between kind of like two to four emails to really onboard your new subscribers to your list. When it comes to the welcome flow, you wanna be in including the offers. So I'm just gonna go into here and show you real quick. Now, as you watch me build the flows, I want to tell you about the incredible sponsors of this video. Me. So I run an email marketing agency and we're partnered with both Klaviyo and Omnisend and we consistently are able to drive 20% or more of our clients' monthly recurring revenue through their email channels alone, no additional ad spend. The account setup that I'm demoing in this video works incredibly well with stores that are doing less than 20,000 a month in revenue. But at the higher levels, there are honestly a lot more you should be doing and could be doing when it comes to email marketing. So if you really wanna take your email to the next level, I highly recommend you schedule in a call with me down below and I'll see if I can help you with that. In terms of your emails, you just wanna be replacing the designs with whatever you designed yourself. Obviously, replace the logos and things like that as well. Um, you might need to resize your logo as I did earlier. Uh, but yeah, this is how you kind of build out the emails. And when you do that, you also wanna be repeating the process for the subsequent emails as well. Um, if you have a discount, I highly recommend mentioning the offer in both the second and third and fourth emails if you have them. In terms of the delays, generally speaking, we like to wait two days to uh, before sending out each email in terms of in terms of the delay between emails. And for the other flows that you will need is gonna be the, aband the browse abandonment, so the product abandonment, product abandonment right here. And also you wanna have like the post purchase. So that would be the cross sells, upsells, and things like that. Really, really simple to import. Feel free to extend the flows as you go about testing and split testing the various kind of features uh, within the emails. For the abandoned cart, if you actually want to get a bit more fancy with it, uh, because you have a lot of uh, SMS numbers collected, you could even incorporate some sort of SMS marketing within your flows. And that's been pretty powerful in terms of open rates because for example, SMS uh, gets about like 80, 90% open rates. Whereas emails typically on flows gets about, I'd say, well, for the, for the first email for abandoned cart, you can see upwards of like 60 to 70% open rates, whereas subsequent ones, it'll definitely be lower. So yeah, when it comes to the campaign side of things, uh, you wanna be doing weekly campaigns to begin with and depending on the open rates, click-through rates and conversion rates, then you could scale that to maybe two emails a week or maybe three emails a week on the high end. Uh, this is kind of the approach that we generally take for clients. And when it comes to campaigns, it's really important that you wanna be sending campaigns only to highly engaged segments. So what I mean by this is if you go to audience and then you hit create a segment, and you want to create a segment based on uh, opened email campaign in the last is in oh oops create segment open email campaign in the last 90 days this is a very standard three months highly engaged segment that we use for pretty much all of our clients right so essentially who is in this segment is anyone that has opened an email from you in the last 90 days which shows that they're probably somewhat engaged right if you have a really really big list i'm talking like a hundred thousand people in your list then you want to dial this down to maybe like a 30 to 60 day slope it just depends on how engaged you want to send uh, people the email emails 
Sorry, it's like it's like 6 p.m. in the UK, so I'm pretty dead at, at this point in terms of my brain capacity. Um, so if I slur my words a little bit, apologies. So yeah, this is the segment that you want to have. Obviously, I don't have anyone in this segment as on my list right now. It's just two of my own personal emails. How you want to name this is 90 Day Highly Engaged. Save segment. And yeah, this is the segment that you generally speaking want to be sending to. You can also be sending to your buyers segment. When it comes to campaigns, there are generally a few things that you want to be aiming for, right? And that's 20% or more open rates and a 2% or above click through rates. So other things when it comes to campaigns that I really wanted to cover in this video is kind of like the different elements that you can use within a campaign. Because when it comes to email marketing, there's only a few kind of things you can play with. And that's like, you, you always need to have a logo at the top, then you wanna have like a banner and then some sort of call to action. And then if you wanna do like some sort of long form copy, uh, direct response driven, you can add that there. Um, but really, realistically speaking, the only features that you need to include are the logo at the top, your banner, a call to action, and the footer of the email. So that would be the unsub link. Other features you can include are like things like long form copy, dynamic products, or uh, static products, uh, user generated content, UGC, reviews, GIFs, and I believe that's it. So, oh wait, no, countdown timer as well. So every email you'll, you'll find is comprised of these kinds of features, right? And essentially to build any email, you could just mix and match all of these as long as you include a logo, banner, call to action, and footer. So for example, if you're building out a campaign that's really designed about community and centered around uh, you know, hey, look, everyone, so many people trust us and things like that, then it will probably look something along the lines of like logo and then banner uh, with text about community driven, driven, driven captions. And then you want to have a call to action maybe to social media links, social media links or uh, reviews, things like that. And then you want to have a bit of copy about, you know, trusted, trusted by 500,000, something outrageous or whatever. And then that's when you can include maybe things like user generated content, like a customer selfie. Uh, and you can even switch it up, right? You can include like a customer selfie right next to the review uh, from that specific customer. Uh, so use customer selfies work really great reviews to show that, hey, look, people are actually using our products and uh, really, really enjoying it. So this could be a campaign or an email within a flow that's really about building authority with your list. Uh, another email that you could, oh, forgot the footer. Obviously you need the unsub link. Another type of email you can send, maybe if it's like, uh, like a flash sale, for example, right? Let's do one of these. Uh, flash sale would be logo, banner, Call to action, countdown timer, footer. Something along those lines where, you know, you obviously have the logo with a, and the banner with the captions of uh, flash sale, 30% off, something along those lines. And then you wanna have a bit of urgency in the sense of like, hey, this offer will expire in 24 hours time. And to get a dynamic countdown timer, it's actually very, very simple. All you wanna do is uh, go to a website called Centric Trick. And this will allow you to create free email timers that you could just copy the HTML of and add it to your OmniSend campaign. So this is actually how we would build out uh, accounts that are kind of doing 20K a month or less. We don't do very many of these anymore. So if you wanna potentially work with me on email marketing, feel free to use the link down below to book in a call with me. And I really, really hope you have found this video useful.